Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man. Over the years, I noticed a pattern in specific areas with my antenna recommendation service. Local ABC stations owned and operated by Disney seem to have weaker signals compared to other stations in the market. I witnessed this firsthand in the Philadelphia area when I used to install outdoor antennas. In this video, I'll explain why I personally believe that Disney owned ABC stations failed their over the air viewers. If you're a cord cutter or into antennas, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. My YouTube channel is dedicated to the cord cutting and antenna community. I'm constantly posting new videos on antenna reviews, reception tips, and so much more. Before I get into this video, I need to explain what ABC owned operated stations are. There are local ABC stations that are owned directly by ABC's parent company, Disney. Most ABC stations in the United States aren't owned by Disney. They're owned by other media companies like Nexstar Media Group, Sinclair Broadcast Group, and Tegna. Disney tends to own and operate ABC affiliates in larger markets such as New York City, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, and a few others you see here. Take a look at this chart. Most of you may not notice anything out of the ordinary, but my technical viewers will. With the exception of Chicago and Fresno, all other ABC owned and operated TV stations broadcast on the VHF band, which means they broadcast on RF channels 2 through 13. VHF TV stations tend to be tricky to pick up for various reasons. The power limits set by the FCC are much lower than UHF stations. The wavelengths are longer, requiring a larger antenna, which most people do not have. Even with the correct antenna, VHF stations can still be problematic just because of how sensitive the band is to noise and interference. It's one of the reasons why many TV stations moved to the UHF band after the digital transition of 2009. If you look at other major network owned and operated stations from CBS, NBC, and Fox, you'll notice most are on the UHF band, so Disney's approach to over-the-air broadcasting is very different. Why would Disney keep most of their TV stations on the VHF band if it meant a not as good signal for over the air viewers? One factor probably has to do with money. VHF broadcast equipment tends to be cheaper than UHF equipment, so Disney probably saved some money when it set up their digital broadcast transmission facilities prior to 2009. VHF TV stations also require less power to cover the same area as the FCC puts it. For example, most Disney-owned ABC stations on the VHF band broadcast between 30 to 50 kilowatts ERP, compared to up to 1,000 kilowatts ERP many UHF TV stations output. This, in turn, means a much lower electric bill despite sacrificing over-the-air coverage. While Disney has applied for power increases in most markets, it's not nearly enough to fix the issues related to the very noisy VHF band especially with their Philadelphia affiliate WPVI. This station broadcasts on a low VHF band, which is absolutely horrible for over-the-air viewers. It requires an antenna at least six feet wide in order to be reliably picked up, which most people do not have. I usually receive at least two or three requests a week from people in the Philadelphia area that cannot pick up 6ABC. While I usually am able to resolve the issue for those who sign up for my antenna recommendation service, it shouldn't be necessary. I find it completely outrageous that a major network like ABC in a large market like Philadelphia chose to stay on a low VHF band. In other areas of the country, TV stations on a low VHF band have either applied to move to UHF or at the very least operate some repeater transmitters to improve over the air coverage in the market. Disney has done neither in the nearly 13 years they've received complaints from over the air viewers in Philadelphia. And unfortunately, it's too late to move to the UHF band now thanks to the FCC selling UHF channels 38 to 51 to cell phone companies. To give you an idea of how bad WPVI's signal is, I sent out a survey to people in the market. Out of the 30 people surveyed, over 82% of them report that the channel is unreliable. 100% of them claim the signal is worse than all other major networks in the market. A final reason why I believe Disney hasn't done too much to improve over-the-air coverage of their local ABC stations. While this point is more speculation, it does make sense from a financial standpoint. 
A local TV station will actually benefit monetarily if people can't get their signal reliably over the air for free. Why? Because they get money from every subscriber of a cable, satellite, or streaming service. In 2021, local TV stations collected roughly $12 billion in retransmission fees from paid TV services. These are fees paid by subscribers for these channels despite the fact that they are free over the air. The more people who have to pay for cable or satellite, the more money a local TV station makes. No one can deny that if a local TV station has a signal that's very hard to be picked up in the market, some viewers may choose to stay with their cable or satellite TV service since they need ABC. This in turn brings the local TV station more money. While Disney does deserve most of the blame for lack of over-the-air coverage on their own operated ABC stations, the FCC bears some responsibility as well. After all, it was the FCC that decided to keep the low VHF band open after selling UHF channels 51 through 69 to cell phone companies in 2009, and then again selling channels 38 through 51 with the FCC repack a few years ago. Now, even if Disney wanted to move their local TV stations to the UHF band, there's no space left to move. Whether intentional or not, I believe Disney failed their over-the-air viewers by making several bad decisions. A combination of most stations on the VHF band and not applying to the UHF band or broadcast repeaters in the area definitely hurt over-the-air viewers. Local TV stations are required to cover the market they're licensed to serve. I don't think a TV station fulfills this requirement if a homeowner needs a six foot long antenna in order to pick up a station. If you're in an area that's affected by a severely underpowered Disney-owned ABC affiliate, or if you just have general reception issues, consider signing up for an antenna recommendation from me on my website at antennamanpa.com. I run a reception report at your location, take a look at the frequencies and signal strength, determine what antenna would work best for you based on my experience testing out over 50 antenna models, installing them in four TV markets, including the Philadelphia market with the trash signal of WPVI. Speaking of WPVI, here's a testimonial from Mark in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. Tyler, 38 channels including WPVI 6AVC. Finally, after a year of trying, I should have got your recommendation first and saved hours of grief and aggravation. Thanks for watching this YouTube video and to the hardworking engineers at the ABC owned operated TV stations. I know you're doing what you can, but please look into possible channel sharing agreements on a UHF station, especially with the launch of ATSC 3.0 Next Gen TV. An additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or as a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos have helped you cut the cord or if you just think they're cool and would like to support them while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind the scenes content, access to my videos ad free one day early, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button this video. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA. If you're not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates whenever I post new videos, feel free to sign up to my email list. I attach a link in the description of the video. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and time related videos and have an awesome day.